Hi, I'm Keith and I'm going to show you how to change hydraulic filters on a CAT 314E. It's a generic video where we're going to be able to go over other makes and models at the same time. First thing that we're going to do is we're going to vent the hydraulic tank. Just being cold in the morning as the day goes on and it heats up, that'll create a positive pressure in the hydraulic tank. We want to make sure that we vent that or when we undo a filter, we're going to have oil, more oil spilling out than we need to have spilling out. We're going to change the hydraulic return filter here. This machine has a cover on the top. We've got to remove that cover. Not all makes and models have a cover on the top. This is the top of a hydraulic tank. We want to make sure that we vent the hydraulic tank by removing the fill cap. Once the fill cap is removed, we know that there's no pressure on the hydraulic tank. Now you have two separate canisters here. One is for your hydraulic filter and one is for another screen that's inside. The screen that's inside is in here. The filter is in here. If you remove the filter before you vent the hydraulic tank, you will have an oily mess. It'll, it'll come out everywhere. There's no way to stop it because the tank is under pressure. On some makes and models, it does not have this cap. It'll have a push button on top and some don't even have that. So on a CAT 314, you don't have to remove this cover, but I'm going to remove this cover because on other makes and models you do. This is a suction screen. It goes over the pump outlet on the bottom of the tank and it stops any contaminants from getting onto the tank. So you can pop it off. It has a little seal on the bottom. We give it a little quick inspection. Now they're all a metal screen. As you can see, it's nice and clean. I like to give it an inspection to see if we have any seal pieces on there or any contaminants. If there are, I like to clean them off before I reinstall. This one's nice and clean. Sometimes it's hard to find where it goes. It's by feel because it's under the oil level. So you bring the suction screen down, you find the top of it, and you give it a little bit of a push to set it onto that pipe in the bottom. Now that we know that that's been checked and we know that it's clean, we're gonna move on to the hydraulic return filter. Now, because we're working with tools above a hydraulic tank, I like to just set this cap back on top, making sure that this nipple goes into this spring surface here. That aligns this suction screen rod and makes sure that it stays where it's supposed to stay. Almost all makes and models have this. You know you've got it, a little bit of spring tension, it's holding it up and it can't move anywhere, okay? I'm just gonna leave that sitting there so we can't accidentally drop something in the hydraulic tank. Next, now that we know the hydraulic tank is vented, we don't have any pressure in there, now we can go on about removing the cap for the hydraulic return filter. Now on a cat, this is a cat, most cats, ha cats have a top that looks exactly like this. We have a snap ring here, we have to remove this snap ring. On a Hitachi or a Volvo or a John Deere, Komatsu, Cabelco, they have just a spring right here and that's what I was talking about, a little bit of spring tension. So when you undo that last bolt, it'll pop up a little bit. Don't be alarmed, that's normal, that's to help hold the hydraulic filter in place. And we use some pliers, we pull this snap ring out. Now this filter is covered in oil. As you pull it out, oil will come off of it. I like to have a drain pan nearby, it can be a bucket, anything to catch the oil. That's a hydraulic filter for your machine. Now this is the new filter. 
it is definitely not an OEM filter. As you can see, there is a little bit differences. So what you want to look for is length the same. Length is the same. Now, obviously the OEM filter here, the one we pulled out has a handle on top. We're going to put that handle on this, on this filter. And we have to get this handle off this hydraulic filter. Sometimes they pop right off, sometimes they don't. In this case, this one didn't pop right off. Not all makes and models, you have to pull this handle off. Hitachis have the handle built in. A lot of other machines just have a piece sitting on top. This one, we have to remove the handle. It's just an O-ring that holds it on. You gotta kinda give it a little bit of a jerk. You crack it loose and wiggle it off. So that's our handle. This handle will fit on the aftermarket filter that we bought and it will just slide right on. Then we take the new hydraulic return filter. We slide it into its canister. Now, it's gonna go onto a little pipe on the bottom too. You saw I twisted a little bit, it dropped down. It can actually press down a little bit more. Sometimes you gotta wiggle it. You wanna make sure it's all the way down. Once you're sure it's down, we're gonna take that handle that we just removed. And as you can see in the top, this is where the handle slots into the lid so it can't turn or twist. You wanna make sure that you're lined up with the bolt holes the same. You have a little bit of a bit of a tap and she's on. Now you reinsert the snap ring again. Then we can take our lid, place it on top and bolt the lid down. Once that's down, we're gonna put the rest of the lids back on and seal the hydraulic tank back up. Because it's spring loaded, you wanna go across. We can put the fill cap back on. Now we can reinsert the cover. And that's how you successfully change a hydraulic return filter in a CAT 314E, as well as all other models. Now that we're done venting the hydraulic tank, we want a small little catch basin to catch oil as we undo the filters. You wanna insert it under the filter, make sure that as we loosen the filter, it catches any oil coming out. I'm using a strap wrench to pull this filter out. There are, other, there are other tools that you can use, different pliers that are made for removing filters. This is always my go-to tool, a, snap fil a strap filter wrench with a ratchet on it. After I've removed the filter, I leave it in the drain pan. I leave the drain pan in there to catch any oil that's dripping out, just so we don't make a mess. Now that the filter is removed, we can see this is a factory OEM filter. This is an aftermarket filter. So we want to double check and make sure the same size that they're going to thread on and seal properly. So we look at the end, they are the same size. As you can see, there's a seal in this one and the factory one has fallen out. So what we're going to do is we're going to see if we can find that seal. Here's that seal. We want to make sure that we find it. We don't want, we want to make sure it's not left in the housing. So when we apply the new oil filter, it's not double gasketed and causing us problems. Now that we've removed the pilot filter, it's easy access to get at the K-strain filter. So we're gonna change the K-strain filter here before we put the pilot filter on. 
Not all makes and models have a case train filter. Sometimes they only have a main hydraulic filter and a pilot filter. Hitachis don't use a case train filter. So in this case, it does have a case train filter. We're gonna change it now. Again, I use a strap filter wrench. I'm gonna crack it loose. Now that it's loose, I'm gonna try and get my trusty little drain pan in here. There is a hose in the way, but we'll see what we can do. All right, we got it set in here. Now I'm gonna remove this filter. Now this is again a factory cat OEM filter that we pulled off and we'll be replacing it with an aftermarket Baldwin filter. We want to double check that it is the same filter. It looks the same length, the seal looks the same diameter, the threads look the same. So we know that this is a safe filter to put on. We want to lubricate the seal a little bit. Using a little bit of the old oil is just fine. Now that the seal is lubricated, we can install it. When you're tightening it up, you only want to go hand tight. You don't want to use a strap wrench to tighten it up as that is too tight. Now that that's installed, we can install the pilot filter. Now what a pilot filter is, is you have two hydraulic systems on your machine. You have a main hydraulic system. That's your cylinders, your swing, your travel, and you have a pilot system. Your pilot system uses a different filter because it's a lower pressure system and that's more for your controls and stuff. Make sure your seal is inserted properly. Add a little bit of oil to it, and again, you can thread this on. Again, only hand tighten, that's more than tight enough. And that's how you successfully change a case train and a pilot filter on a hydraulic system on a Cat 314E and most other makes and models. Mm -hmm.